Okay, in this tutorial, we'll be going over a certain type of problem called combustion analysis. And it's, it's like the next step after learning how to do an empirical formula or how to calculate an empirical formula from percentages. Um, that the, some of the concepts, are, a lot of the underlying concepts are the same. <clears throat> so let's start. Here's this problem where you have a, uh, it says you have 1.62, uh, 1.621 grams of a newly discovered compound. Um, this new, this unknown compound is known to have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, so this compound gets burned in a combustion analyzer, and then the products of, of combustion are always carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Um, so these are this is the amount of water, and this is the amount of carbon dioxide uh, that was obtained in the combustion analyzer. So this amount of material is on the product side, and you started with this amount. So this is what got burned, and it formed this much uh, water, and it formed this much carbon dioxide. So the next que the question here is what is the empirical formula of the compound and this is an important assumption we'll go into why in a little bit assume all of the carbon was converted to carbon dioxide you could get like side reactions where you could get carbon monoxide or just solid carbon like when you burn a candle you could see a little bit of black smoke coming up that's unburnt carbon or soot so we're going to assume that all of this carbon that was in the unknown compound was converted into gaseous uh, carbon dioxide. Um, uh, one of the key, uh, one of the key things to know when when solving this problem is <clears throat> a, you'll need to write a, a combustion reaction. So um, we have an unknown compound, and we know that this compound has. Uh, we know that this compound has carbon and we're going to put, we don't know what it is. That's what, that's, that's our goal is to try to figure out what this is. So we're, I'm going to write CXHY and OZ. So we don't know what this compound is. Um, and we know that in combustion, you have some type of hydrocarbon and it burns in oxygen okay and it's going to form co2 and water vapor h2o so we know that you started with 1.621 grams um, this we're going to assume that you have like excess oxygen because it's just kind of like in the air um, and what was formed is you gotta make sure we read this correctly it says the masses of water and carbon dioxide so uh, water was 1.902 grams and carbon dioxide was 3.095 grams um, <clears throat> so that's what's happening here and let's let's take a look at this in a um, picture of what's called a combustion analyzer so um, this gives you an idea of what's what's actually happening is in this in this tube setup here you have your unknown compound Okay, and our unknown compound is CXHYOZ. And what we're trying to do in this problem is figure out what X, Y, and Z are. Um, and we know that we had 1.621 grams of the unknown. Um, and water vapor was 1.902 grams. And the carbon dioxide was 3.095 grams. Of CO2 and H2O. So there's some type of substance here that will um, bind uh, the amount of water that gets released. So like gas is flowing through here, water will bind to this and then all the water released on the product side is trapped right here. Um, likewise, um, the CO2 should pass through all of that. So it's probably based on polarity, this absorber. Um, so CO2 is, is um, uh, mostly nonpolar and should pass right through this and then the co2 will get trapped right here and then you weigh it and then you figure out how much is is there so <clears throat> this is based on the law of conservation of matter whatever you start with 
should be equal to whatever you end up with. And we're going to end up using some mole-to-mole -mole ratios um, in order to solve this problem. So all, so all of this carbon, here's, here's like the underlying concept here, which allows you to do this, solve this problem. Um, all of this carbon here, um, CX, it winds up here in, in the form of carbon dioxide. Um, so we're going to use this mass right here convert it to uh, moles of carbon dioxide and then get moles of carbon um, and then we'll figure out how much um, was in this in the original sample um, similarly um, all of this hydrogen here uh, wound up in the form of water okay and uh, so we're going to take this number, convert it to moles of water, and then convert it to moles of hydrogen, and then relate it back to this, this original amount, and then we could determine what Y is. The tricky one is oxygen, and that's because oxygen, as you see um, in this problem, uh, we'll use a different color here, but this oxygen, the reason why we saved this one for last is because oxygen winds up here in water, it winds up here and it winds up here in CO2 and to make things even more complicated is the other reactant was oxygen so oxygen is in all four things we see here whereas uh, carbon all of this carbon winds up here all of this hydrogen winds up here but the problem with oxygen is we don't know how much of the reactant oxygen is here and here. So, but I'll, I'll show you there's a kind of like a workaround to solve for oxygen. Once you know what, what carbon and hydrogen are, then we could determine what this oxygen is um, and just kind of disregard the fact that oxygen was in the other reactant. So here, I'll show you some steps in the next slide on how to do this. Okay, so... Um, Step one is, and one and step one and two are kind of like interchangeable. You could either do two first or the step I'm writing first. So we get moles of carbon from, um, you get moles of C and, sorry, you get moles of C and grams of carbon from CO2. So from CO2, Um, it was in the combustion analyzer. It formed uh, 3.095 grams of carbon. Okay, and we're going to convert this to moles of car moles of carbon. Okay, you get 3.095 grams of carbon dioxide. So, um, in one mole of CO2, use the molar mass, 44.01 grams of CO2. Uh, and within one carbon dioxide molecule, there's one mole of carbon. So we write uh, for every one mole, okay, so we want that mole, that, that CO2 to cancel. So we write one mole of CO2, there's one mole of carbon, okay, because there's, there's a one right there. So that's, that's why we get that one to one ratio. Okay, if we work this problem out, then we get 0 0.0703 moles of carbon. There's an additional step here. We're going to get grams of carbon, and I'll show you why we do this step. We're going to save this number temporarily, but we're also going to need um, grams of carbon. So um, there's 12.01 grams of carbon per mole. Um, and so this winds up being... 0.845, and I'll show you what we're going to do with this in a minute. I'll just kind of put a squiggly line around it. Okay, and we're, we're also going to need this number. Um, so if we go if we go back here, um, we wound up out of the out of this. How much of this is actually moles of carbon? It's this number. And where did this carbon come from? To go back a slide, um, all of this carbon. Uh, that moles of carbon, it came directly from this and nowhere else.
Okay, so you can relate that mole of carbon that we just solved to the original sample. Okay, the next step here is to get moles of hydrogen and grams of hydrogen from H2O. So just like we did in the previous step, we do the same foot but for hydrogen. So we had 1.902 grams of water. Um, and we're trying, our goal here is to try to get moles of hydrogen. Okay, so we have to get to moles of water first. There's 18.02 grams. Okay, and now here we it was a one-to-one -one ratio, but here it's actually two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of water. Okay, and then these cancel, moles of HCO cancels with that. And so now we get mole of H. So you should wind up with uh, 0.211 moles of H. Okay, and we're going to actually do a little side work here to get grams of hydrogen. So in one mole, in one mole of hydrogen, um, I'm sorry, I just noticed I didn't line up my units. So in one mole of hydrogen, there is 1.008 grams. So this is 0.213 grams of H. Okay, and I'll show you why we just did that. So why we got this number and this number. It's so we could figure out oxygen. So you get uh, grams of oxygen by subtracting um, from the original sample. mass of the original sample. Um, so use this total mass of the unknown minus your mass of hydrogen plus the mass of carbon. Okay, and if we do this, then we would get uh, the unknown was 1.621 minus 0.213 plus 0.845. Okay, and then we get 0.563. grams of oxygen. The reason we had to do that, again, so I, I mentioned this earlier, but the reason we had to do oxygen this way is because oxygen is, appears everywhere. It's in the reactant, it's in CO2 and H2O. So we have to get the grams of this and the grams of all this hydrogen, all this carbon. And if we subtract it, so if we take this guy right here and then we subtract the C and H, then we'll get um, the grams of oxygen that was in the unknown. Okay, so this is how we isolate just the oxygen in the unknown is by subtracting C and H. Okay, so this is the only way to do this, to do oxygen. If you try to do oxygen like this way or this way, um, it's going to be incorrect because it, it doesn't account, or it, um, the oxygen winds up in the other samples. So we actually need to get the uh, we need to get this into moles here so that we could compare the the mole amounts and we're going to divide by the least mole mole number. So one mole of oxygen is 16.0 grams. So divide that by 16, and then we get 0 0.0352 moles of oxygen. So now we compare um, this number, this, er, yeah, this number and this number. 
So our lowest is actually oxygen. So we're going to divide all of these by oxygen. So divide this by point or point zero three five two. Divide this by point zero three five two, and then divide this by point zero three five two. Okay, and for this you get um, you get about two. And notice, uh, I did, I kind of disregarded sig figs because we're looking for the closest whole number that we get. Okay, point two one one divided by point zero three five two, we get five point nine nine four or about six, and then for this we get one. Okay, and this is our empirical formula. Is uh, C two H six O one. Okay, um, that that's our uh, final answer. One one special note here: you may wind up on this step right here. You may wind up with um, with a fraction like on these. So let me let me add one special note for what to do if you get a fraction. So. Um, Um, on the last step, uh, you may get um, 0.33, or you know, like you might get a third, or you might get a half. You might get um, 0.5. Uh, for example, that didn't happen on this problem, but I've seen combustion analysis problems. Uh, where you end up with something like this, 2.33 H6O1, something like that. Um, to get rid of that third, you multiply all of them by three. Um, so if you do it to this one, you have to do it to all of them to keep the proportions correct. So you kind of like distribute that three. So then it would be, um, your empirical formula would be C7H18O3 in that case. And if you get a half, you multiply it by two. So let's say, for example, you had a problem and you wound up with this as your empirical formula. Um, if you multiply each one by two, it would it would get rid of that half, and then you would get C five H twelve O two. Okay, and we'll we'll do a couple practice ones tomorrow in class.